Ok. So recording is in process. Everybody is in. Here we are. I muted everybody. We have we have we still have people coming in. Well, we are on time. Hello. We are almost there. One more okay. minute. We are 16. Very good. <clears throat> Master, you let me know if you want to start. We are on time. Okay. Okay, we're on time. So, good night, everyone, and welcome to another session of the New York Food Club uh, session, I Just Want to Play. And tonight, we're, uh, we give a warm welcome to a very good colleague and mentor, uh, Maestro Marcelo Alvarez. Today, he's going to be talking about tango and, and piazzola and the language Piazzolla was using in his, in his food compositions um, back in the dates. So um, a little bit about, about Maestro, he is from Argentina. He's from Argentina, of course, and what better place to, to be right now. And um, he, is, um, he has written, to, he is also the founder of what is called the Conscious Flutist, um, a pet, uh, pedagogy, uh, two pedagogy books of, of those, and he explains um, injuries and how to play in, in, well, in, in wellness, mostly in wellness and how to, to manage um, stress situations and for musicians and that sort of stuff. So I'm not going to take too much time of your, of your night. So my name is Darwin Cosme. I'm a board member to, with the New York Food Club. And I give you a good night from Puerto Rico, which is very hot right now. And I know New York is very cold right now, too. So I'll let you to it. Maestro, you can take it away. Hello. Hello, everybody. I'm very happy to stay here talking about uh, one of the most composers of our country around the music of uh, Astor Piazzolla, around the music of tango, that uh, uh, it is a, a very important music language of our country. Piazzolla is not the only composer who influ influenced 
the evolution of tango, but one of the most important. There are also another musicians like Salgam Pugliese, Troilo, Pecaro, that influenced uh, to, to Piazzolla also. Uh, he's created his new language based on traditional tango. He reorganized what was already written and created an amazing new language. But it took the essential elements and produced the change we know today. He was a visionary, he was a, a music worker, a hard music worker. And um, I know if, uh, if we want to follow how to understand, how, to, how we can perform this kind of music, what kind of sound, one type of articulation, the phrasing. Um, I, I, I need to, to think something or to do something. The most uh, important way to, to understand Piazzolla's music is to search on the web, on YouTube, Said Piazzolla playing his own music. It is the best reference to understand how to play this music properly. Because Piazzolla, I think that Piazzolla is alive through his videos, through his recordings. And this is the most important way to understand how to play. Now I can tell you, I can talk to you about uh, other important tools that we must consider to uh, play, for example, uh, the um, six tango studies. I think uh, now here tonight I'm going to, to talk about some questions around these tango studies. Um, there are some mistakes when we are thinking on this um, kind of music because we almost uh, always think that they are just studies for flute but they come to us from the music of tango. So we must consider them as tangos. And we must consider that the music, that the tango music is, um, is uh, music, elastic music, is free music, not a rigid music. So, um, if we if we think, for example, in fast movements of uh, Piazzolla's music, we uh, try to think that they are designed on rhythmic formulas. Piazzolla's um, used rhythmic formulas to create different rhythmics, different articulations, um, and it's necessary that we uh, must understand the, the, main, <clears throat> the main tools to uh, play that studies in the correct, in the correct way. I uh, share with you, with all of you, I don't know if, if all of you have the, the file uh, that the PDF that I shared for the New York Club. 
where I wrote some considerations around the um, tango flute studies. Um, first, uh, first of all, well, let me see. Um, first of all, we we must think on the on the articulation because in the fast movements the, the articulation the accent accented notes defines the sound that we will use to perform um, ah here okay but I I, 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 I want to to share my my own my own feel can i i want to share my my own my own feel first of all we must consider uh, here i want to to share my okay i'll see if i can i can Help you okay. to share rather than me sharing. Okay, here, here we are. Okay. Here we are. Uh, one of the most important rhythmic formulas that Piazzolla use in these tango studies is the round three plus three plus two formula. For example, if um, and uh, that comes uh, from the milonga style, and that how it's uh, it's known. Three, three, two, tres más tres más dos. Three plus three plus two. For example, if we have um, a bar with four quarters here, no? I am showing for you the first bar with four quarters. Then we can group the quarters in a different way. And this is in the second bar, this is the milonga root, the most important milongas root that then Piazzolas uses on the tango into the tango studies. Then we can make a subdivision in eighth notes and we have this rhythm formula. For example, to understand then uh, how Piazzolla organized the rhythms into the tango studies. First of all, we must understand these considerations because um, they are the, the most important tool to, to understand how to play that, this milonga style. In the first um, bar, we have to the four quarters. Then at the second, I'm going to play into the milonga style. For example, in the second here, I have one example with a melody sequence that I'm going to play like the, mil the milonga, milonga's rhythm. This is one of the most important rhythms 
into Piazzolla's music. Then we make a subdivision, or Piazzolla can do a subdivision about the uh, eighth notes, the third uh, bar, for example, and we have Yeah. You can recognize this kind of rhythm, for example, in the study number three that we have in the fourth bar. So, where the rhythms used by Piazzolla comes from, for example, in the study number three, from the Milonga style. And here, in this example, we have the root of that kind of rhythm. And it's very important to understand this because sometimes we, we begin to play this kind of music without a knowledge, a real knowledge about the essence of the, of the rhythms used by Piazzolla. So one of the most important rhythms are the milonga. And here we are, we have this kind of examples to understand what uh, we can do when we are playing um, this rhythm organization. Then um, we I, here I have one example around the third study, and if you Look here. I have um, I have wrote the first eight bars of its movements, and you can see the accents at the first notes. Here we have the same rhythm of three, three, two, written by Piazzolla. On the into the, the third tango st study. Three eighth notes, three eighth notes, two eighth notes. And it sounds like this. So the accent is the most important symbol into this character, into this kind of movements. With the accent, we are um, talking about everything. We are talking about the energy we need to play this uh, music uh, into a correct way. Um, how can we study, how can we understand to practice this movement? For example, first of all, we have the first eight bars from the study number three. How can I, what, what I must do to, to understand the practice? what I must uh, think about how, how to, to, to study this music, uh, how to, to perform into the, the tango style, you know? Well, first of all, I'm going to play only, only the notes 
with accents. First of all, to define the movement, the phrasing of the melody. Mainly, the, um, the, the accents uh, are uh, on the, um, define the, the main melody. Hmm? Sometimes, not always. But here, it is clear that the accented note define the melody. So I'm going to play, if you want to study the first eight bars of the third study, first of all, I'm going to play only the notes with accents. Here, I understood how the melody moves, hmm? the intention of the melody or the phrasing. Then, we're going to play two notes, the accented notes and the next eighth note, the slurred eighth note. For example, in this case, we must notice, we must think about some important thing. The first note with accent we need to play with a deep sound, with a hard articulation, soft articulation, with the power of the air presenting the note. It uh, really sounds very clear and powerful. So, and the second eighth note is short and a little piano than the first. So we never try to play these slurred notes, eighth notes in this example, uh, with the same with the same energy. Always in tango language, the first accented note is um, it, it was more clear than the second yeah? so we can play So here I wrote little dynamics, hmm? small dynamics, that refers how to play this kind of two notes written on this Piazzolla style. Then I going to play the first eight bars, uh, the, the full music of the first eight bars, uh, trying to put the accents and the other notes in order. So, just the accented notes sounds soft. The, other, the others are a little piano than the accented.
Can you hear eh? how it works? Good, good, because we are talking the tango's language. If we read the, the first page of Tango Studies score, we found uh, some sentences, and I can read for you this. It is advisable that the performer should well exaggerate the accents and respirations, therefore inspiring the way of which tangos are played on the bandoneon. Uh, it's difficult because um, a ver, voy a finish to, to share the the screen it's difficult because uh, here Piazzolas suggests that we as flute players need to think the flute as a bandoneon when we are playing this kind of music. It, it is very difficult to, to make this because the bandoneon uh, has a, a very big, powerful, it, it is a big instrument. Uh, it uses a lot of air. It is like a, a small organ. So, uh, we can imagine, we can't imagine a one flute with the powerful of a bandoneon. But uh, how can we do? What can we do to prepare the articulations, to prepare the accents? We need to think about the power of articulation. The articulation defines, in this case, the sound, not the sound defines the articulation. If you prepare a correct articulations with the accents, with the slur notes, eighth notes, uh, short, and um, some tools that we, we need to understand, the tango style sounds without any problem. Um, here I have the the other the other example I, I want to, to share with you. Any questions? If you if you want to uh, here. Here, yeah. this is the, the file I, I share with, with all of you through the New York Club. Here I explain some, some consideration. For example, uh, it is a mistake to think first of defining the sound and then incorporating the articulation. First of all, we must think on the articulation, how to produce yeah. how to produce um, into this tango language. And there are different ways of articulating the sounds in Piazzolla, depending on whether the note has an accent, a dot, or if it is the second slur, eighth note of two. That uh, I, I was playing for you. And here, this uh, written formula, the three, three, two, is used by Piazzolla in different studies, and uh, it is organized in different in different ways. Let me show you the examples. For example, in the study number three. The three, three, two is like this.
Then the study number eight, we have another three, three, two rhythm formula and sounds like this. Hear the energy of the accented notes, the presence, the powerful of the sound. It is the more important thing that you must to understand when you want to play this music. And then, in the study number five, there is another example how Piazzolla organized the rhythm. But here we have a ver, uh, I need to here we have um, a variation of the three three two rhythm. We have here uh, if you uh, if you can see this example number seven in study number five another different rhythmic formula appears. First bar is three, two, three, mm? and it sounds like this. One bar is three, two, three. The second bar is three, three, two, and, and, and that it is. Uh, how Piazzolla organized these first six bars. One with three to three, number three and number six. Two, four and number five. Two, four and six with three, three, two rhythm formula. And now I'm going to play for you how it sounds. So, they are different kind of rhythmic formulas organization hmm? that comes from the milonga style. That is, you need to understand when you consider the possibility to play this kind of music. Um, Principally, the, the fast movements of the tango studies. Because uh, always appears the, the same for, uh, rhythmic formulas, always appears different moments, but Piazzolla uses them a lot, always. Okay. Any question? Somebody to to need to ask something? No? Okay. If anyone would like to ask a question, just put it in the chat and then okay. when a, 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 an appropriate moment comes up, it, it will be answered. Okay. Well, here they are simple examples how can help you 
to understand the, the rhythm and the articulation into this music. Piazzolla created a, a wonderful music, a wonderful music. He uses the tango roots, the tango language. He has uh, also musicians that help him to define his own tango language, like uh, principally Aníbal Troilo, que solo played in, in his orchestra when, when he was young, and he was a, a very, very great reference for him. So um, when he created his own language, took these important elements and organized them into different manners. So uh, it's not difficult to understand these, uh, these thought, thoughts if you understand, uh, for example, the three, three, two rhythm formula wrote by Piazzolla into the tango studies. Another example that I consider uh, important to, to tell you is in the study number one. The, um, the characteristic of this study is also the power of the articulation. They are very difficult at the, um, when we are playing the low notes. The reference is that Piazzolla used the low notes with a great accents, so we need to, to define properly the sound uh, in this register to play with a great, great sound in the low register. For example, we have this written organization at the beginning of the first tango study. Here we have four quarters, eh? the time of four quarters uh, per bar, but at the first bar Piazzolla wrote this rhythm. How can I think this rhythm to play correctly into the tango language? We have one quarter with dot, then the second, the third, and the fourth. They are the same rhythm. So we have four quarters per bar, but in this uh, this this uh, the first rhythm, we can think about twelve eighth notes to define this kind of rhythm. So first of all, we can think on four quarters with dot like this. For example, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, papa, 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 pap
One, two, one, two, three, four. Hmm? Into one bar of four quarters, we can organize the rhythm in two different ways. First, the first four notes, that's uh, quarters with, with dots, we can think on four times, 12 eighth notes. And then we can think on two quarters in a tempo of two quarters. And it sounds like here, and it will be more clear when you are performing that kind of rhythm. I can uh, I can make a subdivision. Then the music. So, this is how we can think this kind of written formulas wrote by Piazzolla in this first study. First of all, think on the four first temp uh, times beats and then the second beats in two quarters. So, uh, it is useful because um, we must be clear when we are performing the different readings. We must, uh, we must use a very hard articulation to play the accented notes eh? with a very deep, deep sound. We, we must sound very, very clear like this. <laughs> Not only to use the power of the tongue, also to produce a sound with a great power of the air. Not only the, the tongue's work, hmm? also with, with, a, with a, a great bubble of air producing this kind of articulation. Try to think about the sound of the bandoneon to reproduce the same articulations. If you watch Piazzolla's videos uh, on YouTube, you can see how he uses his instrument, how he produces the sound, the energy, the powerful, the respect. It works uh, very, 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 very good because it is his own language, no? But uh, we can consider to 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 make an imitation of his work. It is, it is very, very, very useful. Then we have the same example at the study number six, because we have the same written formula 332. And the, um, the beginning of, of this study sounds like this. Hmm? 
Hmm? This is the full music. When we want to practice, first we try to play only the accented note. Like we did, I did uh, in the number three. I attach the second note, the second slow short note. And then I can play the full music, paying attention on the articulation and the, how the, the melody moves. When, try to remember this, that is, a very important code of the tango's laws. If you have two notes, two eighth notes slurred, the first with accent and the second is short and a little piano than the first. Always, always we can play this rhythm formula in that way if you consider that you are playing into the tango style the first note accented and the second short and a little piano than the first Not try to play them with the same volume. They are different. And it is a very, a very important tool to, to understand if you want to, to perform that kind of music. Um, another element that you you need to consider is uh, are the silence for example the silences in this passage of Piazzolla's study number five must be breathed they are the impulse that the musical phrasing needs the notes in red need a lot of air support This uh, is very, very important to understand this because the, the accent is the silence is not only the no presence of music. Suddenly the silence is a, a moment that prepare the energy that you are going to play after it. For example, uh, to feel, you need feel the silence to produce the real effect of it. Here it is in number five. So here I have a. Ah, here. Number, here is the, the example number eight that we have 
four eighth notes, then one silence. The melody continues with four beats, then one silence, four beats, three beats, and really one silence. And it is very, very important the presence of the sign. Hmm? If this does that, if 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 the silence um, prepares the impulse of the music that we are going to play after it. So it is important to feel the silence and then play the accented note with a good energy. understand the powerful of the silence then the music if you feel them then the music comes freely with any problem well um, then there is a, another example that I want to show you that it is in the study number one and here we have a, a problem with the sound of the low notes because Piazzolla uses all the time and it's very difficult. For example, in bar number uh, 35 of, of study number one, uh, when it, uh, it, um, it is the marcato movement, the marcato begins with a lot of articulation in extreme notes of the low register. It, it is now easy to play low notes with a good sonority without tension in the articulation. The practice is gradual. First we focus on the sonority and then we incorporate different articulation without losing the quality of the sound. We start with lar large values and then an end with eighth notes. For, e for example, in bar number 35, we have these passes. Try to listen to the low notes. There, there is a, the problem. <laughs> So, always Piazzolla supports the melody on the notes, the low notes. So, I try to think and to prepare this example, uh, to prepare a way uh, to study this kind of passages. For example, if we have mm -hmm. 
First of all, I can play here with quarter notes, the notes of the melody, and play this. We can repeat. Then, to prepare the articulation on the eighth notes, I can play using the diaphragm action. Here the problem is between the distance between the A, the this A, and the low C here. No? La, which, um, a, give me a moment. Flat uh, here. Okay. Ba. Uh, Then a moment I move the no, I'm going to share again the same page. Sorry. Uh, to status examples here. Ah, oh, okay. Here we are. The one A flat and the low C. We have this distance to practice. Then, tongue and diaphragm. And then, with eighth notes, using the same intervals. And then we can play the music into the, the score. These four eighth notes, these uh, intervals, appears always here in the first tango study. Hmm? Fa, C, A, C. Hmm? And this is how you can practice to perform this kind of uh, melody movements. If you want to play with a very strong articulation, with a great powerful. So, uh, here, uh, definitely we have to think on these studies, tango studies, <clears throat> around the power of the articulation, about the power of the sound defined by the articulation. Always to play the accented note with a great presence. The other is not necessary. <clears throat> Always play the one accented note of power and the second slower note a little short and a little piano hmm? with uh, less volume. This is a, 
that is uh, something uh, like uh, the tangos the tango laws that we need to accept if we want to play this music well um, i'm going to see the uh, the chat tempo yeah there oh. was a question uh, yes yeah question about uh tempo yeah yeah about tempo it is it is a good question um i can i can talk about tango's music as a free music if you hear listen to different singers singing the same tango you can listen very different performance thinking on the tempons thinking on the phrasing so here when we see around um i want to give me a moment i want to to look for the page there. here i have the the pdf of the i'm going to play for you for example some characteristics of the of the tempo it's a good question because it is not a rigid music we can consider the powerful of the silence the powerful of the accents how the accents moves the music give me a moment and what can i show you one example well let go let's go to number three i'm going to show you the oops, the complete score sorry here can you see yes no number three study number three now we know about how to use the articulation we were talking about that so we can think first of all we must think on the notes on the uh, accented notes first of all we must try to organize first these notes then the others and how the accents produces the movement of the music how can you think the phrasing of the music there's a word into tango language that it is very important and it is rubato we can make different kind of rubatos in this music um, a ver. there is some mistakes when we are thinking on this kind of music i told to you at the beginning of the of the speech because we consider this music as flute studies and we <clears throat> we not only try to consider like uh, flute studies they are tangos and the melody in the tangos music moves moves every time it's not static it's not really rigid we can 
move. We can pay attention to the accented notes to produce the swing of this music. For example, <clears throat> I'm going to play a part, the first part of the study number three, and you can listen how the music moves. <clears throat> try to organize my phrase between the different kind of accents that I am using into the music. For example, here we have fermatas, so I try to to play with another tempo here in the uh, seventh, sixteenth uh, notes, los quintillos. With a little support on the first note in the in the E. sort of, how do you say it, in opera recitativo. I can think in, a, in some kind of recitativo to play this movement in the study number three. Then I can show you the power of the silence and the power of the articulation and the accents and how it produces the, the movement of the music here in this bar, in here, for example. For example, in this passage, I am playing like with, with, with a toy, I am playing with the tempo. I'm not playing always with the same tempo. For example, here you can listen the movement of the phrase. <laughs> B 
Then, what happens into the slow movements, into the, low, the Piazzolla's slow movements? There is another language. Because we have, we are all, we are, we are alone playing this. There's no accompaniment. We are alone. We have all the time to phrase the slow movements. For example, let's go to number four. How can I play this lento meditativo? And then tempo ad libitum. So this very free to phrase. This is a wonderful opportunity to think on the powerful of our phrasing, of our music, of our talent, of our sound. And it can sound like this. Not hurry. Try to enjoy all this music. Hmm? All this music. Is a variation of, of the first of the first thing, and we also play with a with a freestyle, I, I suppose. So here 
you can see and you can feel how the music can move yeah? not we um no veremos we must not be uh, respectuosos <laughs> we must not be respect respectful with the time on the slow slow movements because uh, i must to I must to play with the tempo I must to phrase with a free movement trying to feel where the music moves where the phrase where the where is the direction of the, of the phrase and then try try to move with the music um, here it is clear tempo ad libitum lento meditativo with no hurry enjoying each note Join each phrase. Hmm? Only try to respect this symbol, hmm? the breath here. I am marking, and then move always the phrase. Try to be very very clear here with the accents. Here we have the, the same the same example, the first note with articulation at the second a little piano. Huh? Can you understand? If we talk about the vibrato where can we use I, I don't like to to play this music with with a, a great vibrato I use uses uh, I use the, the vibrato in in some moments not always for example effect of sound of attention yeah, with the, the, the dynamics and the vibrato working together not trying to to play always with the same dynamic or with the same using the same kind of, of vibrato for example talking about dynamics here we have piano hmm? Piazzolla wrote piano, but it is an intention. We try to to play not with a linear dynamic. Uh, we try to focus in different um, little dynamics into the phrase. For example, if 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 I think on on that piano, I can imagine these dynamics yeah, I produce diminuendo at the first note sound mm, to produce that the energy moves with articulation also 
So, um, uh, they are some ideas, some important tools that you must consider when you think to, to play uh, this beautiful flute studies. Uh, you, you, you need to enjoy them very much because they are wonderful music, wonderful music written for the flute. Uh, and if you want to understand how it is Piazzolla, the Piazzolla style, search on YouTube and try to listen to him playing his own music. He, uh, there, <laughs> uh, it is the the secret of all of that. Well, uh, well, I would like to I would like to say thank you very much. Uh, we would love to see you. So, could you stop screen sharing for just a moment so we could see you again, Maestro? Yes, yes. Here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There you are. All right. Well, for, well, for everyone, I think we've we've just greatly appreciated you spending time with us. And I feel a, a deep reverence for this music and for your ability to explain it to us and your beautiful well, sound and wonderful playing. So thank you so much for, for, for joining us. Does anybody have any questions that yes. they would like to ask? Try to, try to make, yeah. make it. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to take too much of your time, but I, I, I think you've pretty Probably. much gotten all the ones that I saw in the chat. And uh, thanks again. Thank you very much. And thanks to everybody for joining. I just want to play. I think uh, each time we've, we've had wonderful people, but I just, just very, very wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for the, for the invitation. Yeah. Uh, I suppose you can understand what I was uh, telling to you about the- Absolutely. <laughs> about the tango style, about uh, the importance of the articulation, how to think, how to produce, how to to think the accents, because they are very very important to to move Piazzolla's music. Thank you very much. Well, we play. And, we, we play this. I hope and to, again, to I, see I haven't you felt later. like I understood till now. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thanks thank everybody. You, thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye to everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.